Hello, hello, hello. Hope you're doing well today. I'm going to uh, demonstrate how I would sketch out a, a, an image of a rhinoceros beetle. So join me and I hope that I'm able to help you learn some things. So I have an image, uh, let me just show you real quick. So this is an image I spoke about this once before. So I screen grabbed this image uh, from a search that I did for rhinoceros beetle. And now I just want to edit this image so that it's mostly the rhinoceros beetle, not any of those other things that were on my screen grab. So I'm just going to uh, crop it so that what, what's filling up my screen is the image of the rhinoceros beetle. And now uh, I'm ready to work. The reason I like to grab it from the internet is um, maybe I did a search, maybe tomorrow I go to find the same image again and for some reason I can't. So I just like to have it. Uh, sometimes I'll print this image in a larger scale so that I can study some of the details more. But for our purposes today, uh, I don't think I need to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started on studying this image. And I'll leave it <coughs> right here on the screen so that you can see kind of what I'm looking at and I'll point out some of the things that I'm doing as I'm studying it. Uh, all right, so let's get started. Gonna work with a pencil, uh, not any kind of uh, particular drawing pencil, just kind of a number two pencil. Um, and let's get started. So what I think about a lot of times before I begin drawing an image like this is I want to look at kind of how this rhinoceros beetle fits on the screen and think about where I want to place it on my piece of paper. Um, so just kind of where it fits within the frame. I want to think about, am I going to do anything in the background or do I want the rhinoceros beetle to be kind of the focus of my image, the full focus? Um, and then, yeah, and then the last thing that's really important before I begin is when you're drawing with your pencil, make sure that you draw really nice and light. Um, I've heard my friend Mr. Jackson talk about whispering with your pencil on the page, which I think is a great way to think about it. That way, any lines that I create that I'm unhappy with, I can easily change or mark over. So I'm going to start with uh, kind of this backside of the beetle, beetle backside. And I'm just kind of looking at that curve and I'm thinking about where I want to place it on my page here. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Just lightly drawing that curve. I'm whispering with my pencil on the paper. Notice, so it's probably difficult to see, but I'll, I'll pick this up so you can see it a little more closely. You can see I've got three lines there, um, and each one of those was kind of an attempt at getting a curve that I'm happy with. Uh, notice I didn't erase between each one. I just kind of drew each one and, and then just kind of looked at it um, to see, like, am I happy with that? Do I feel like that's kind of the way that beetle backside looks? Um, and I think I am happy with kind of the one that I've got there. I'm not going to erase those just yet. I might not erase them until after I ink. Uh, notice how it's kind of square at the end, so I'm going to kind of square that up. <clears throat> one thing I do, and I do this constantly as I'm drawing, as I'm studying an image, is I look at kind of relationships here. So I'm looking at kind of this distance, that flattened backside of the beetle. And then I'm going to look at kind of how tall is the curve. And as I'm studying it, it's interesting because the curve, uh, by my eye, if I was to draw a line straight across here, the curve is actually a little bit taller than this, this flattened backside. So that's kind of helping me think about it. I'm going to continue now. Uh, it's kind of a flat section here. And then uh, it angles up here before the end. So I've kind of got that. Still drawing very, very lightly. Uh, notice that the curve comes up, and there's a very subtle curve here. So this, where this uh, angled line comes up and joins this guy, there's a very subtle curve that makes that shape. So I'm going to create that. There's a little bit of space between uh, what would be the backside and the head, I believe. And so I'm going to kind of create that space. I'm noticing that there's another kind of angled piece there. I'm also noticing that this angled piece seems to go up. So if I was going to continue this line up, that's where the next angle 
angle that kind of makes the head would begin. So we've got that, feeling pretty good about that. I'm gonna draw uh, these horns um, and I'm going to, again, I'm just kind of looking at the image and referencing, um, you know, kind of how tall they need to go, how long they are. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of go for it. And I feel okay about that. That feels all right. Might be a little more curved here. Other than that, I think that's good. Just again to show you. <coughs> so you can see I've got those two lines there. Those are both just kind of attempts at what I want it to look like. But I'm not erasing anything yet. Still just drawing very, very lightly. All right. All right. Now I'm going to create the hook that is the inside of that curve. It's nice because it's a very kind of a clean C, the letter C that I see. And I'm again looking at kind of references so I'm noticing that this space this distance is about the same distance from the tip of these curves so I want to come about halfway back uh, so I'm just gonna make like a very tiny little mark there and that's kind of a I'm going for that mark I want to connect this curve that I'm getting ready to create to that mark so I'm gonna start from here There are some artists, and I don't, I won't fault you for doing this, but I see students do this a lot, where they'll they'll just do that kind of sketch, 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 sketch that line, and that can work. You can do that, and that especially if you're drawing lightly, that works. A lot of times, I just like to try to go for it. So I just like to kind of create that line, let my pencil stay on the paper the entire time, and just see if I'm happy with what I've made. Um, that's my preference. Again, I'm not trying to tell you how to do what you were doing. Uh, so I'm going to continue that C shape. And again, now I'm noticing where these, there looks like they're like two little horns there and they, uh, they come just a little bit beyond that top horn. So I want to keep that in mind. And then they kind of just hook back there at the end. And I think I'm okay with that. Knowing that when I draw the other side of that, it's going to come out just a little bit further. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Hook that guy around. And then I'm going to kind of extend it. <coughs> and I feel okay about that. I'm going to notice in here, there's like a very light line here that separates this top horn from the bottom horn and where the eye and that the rest of the head are. So I'm going to go ahead and um, create that. I'm not going to worry about the second horn just yet. I'll come back and draw that in a moment. So I'm going to draw that. I'm noticing also before I draw that, that the bottom part of this head is kind of flat like, like that backside that we drew. So I'm going to kind of continue that. And go ahead and create that. Uh, over here, there's kind of some mouthpieces I'm not really clear on. So I'm just going to kind of draw some rough area there. And now I'm going to make that line that I mentioned just before. So um, looking again for reference, where, where does that line fall in relationship to kind of the edge of that curve? So I've got my edge of my curve here. I'm going to bring that line just a little bit uh, further, further over. So I've got it. I'm going to draw it. I think that's okay. All right, now I'm looking at that eye. It's kind of difficult to see. I might zoom in, but I'll, I'll you'll find sometimes, especially when you do a screen grab, it's kind of grainy. Uh, it's maybe not super helpful. So I'm just gonna go back to the regular size and I'm just gonna lightly draw that eye. And then the other thing I wanna really focus on is that wedge of light reflection. So it's kind of a little like a pie slice there. I want to make sure that I make note of that because that's a space that I don't want to uh, fill in with any color. I want that to stay nice and white like that. I'm going to draw this little um, antenna or maybe it's the other leg on the other side um, and I'm looking at kind of where it falls in relationship to the horn. What's nice is I notice so these horns are almost directly above it so I'm going to kind of use that just gonna draw it out from here. Notice that gets bigger there at the end. I think that's all right. 
I'm going to draw this other, I think this is like a mouthpiece is what I envision that to be, some sort of maybe a grabber for the mouth. So I'm just going to make kind of a, kind of a sideways V shape. Alright, all right. I'm going to now move on to the legs and I'm going to, before I do that I'm just going to create this kind of abdomen I think. Notice that it's fuzzy in this space, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of create that. And here I'm noticing that in this space, kind of below that angled line, it's a little bit fuzzy, so I'm going to kind of create that fuzzy shape. And um, let's draw some legs. All right. <clears throat> so we see that the leg comes all the way up inside where that, that uh, kind of angled shape is. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. Notice that it, um, it seems to bend a little bit, right? Where if that line, that flat line that makes kind of this separation part, uh, I feel like that would be kind of a bend in the leg. And now I'm going to draw this second segment here. And I just want to uh, do that thing again where I'm referencing. So I'm looking at kind of how tall is this in relationship maybe to this guy. Because they look kind of the same or close to it. So I'm just going to use that. So this section of leg should be close to this distance when I create it, which is really helpful as I'm thinking about how far down do I make this. I feel like that's pretty close. Uh, so I'm going to kind of create that shape there. And then this is just kind of that curved part that's the end of the leg. I, I know, just because I've looked at these bugs before, if I was to look really closely at that, I would see kind of a bunch of segments that make that up. But I'm not able to do that with this image, so I'm just going to create that curve. And I'm going to notice that the edge, this outside edge of the curve, seems to come below where that angle ends, so I'm just going to kind of create that. And you might, I might, I'm going to make this kind of a bumpy line instead of kind of a flat line. I notice it gets a little bit wider at the end, so I'm going to flare that out just a little bit. And then I'm going to add just kind of a little hook on there. If you've ever held one of these guys, you probably already know it, they'll hold on really well. Like they don't hurt you, but those little hooks, they can hold on to your hand. It's hard to get them off your finger if you're trying to release them somehow. I'm going to move up to this front leg, and I'm going to start with kind of this shape that's uh, underneath it. I think it's because the leg is coming straight at us, and then it kind of hooks down. So I'm going to look at where it is in relationship to kind of this little hook and this back leg. It looks like it's halfway in between. So I just want to kind of keep that in mind as I'm placing this. I'm going to make that kind of a, it's a difficult shape to describe. It's kind of a ball. I'm making multiple lines again, just to show you up close. So you can see I've, I've made several attempts at creating that curve and I'm just looking at what I see on the picture. Um, so. All right, so feel okay about that. I'm going to start to draw the this length of leg. I'm noticing that it comes down a little bit below where this guy was. I'm also noticing that it's wider than this guy, so I want to think about that as I kind of draw that shape. And I'm also going to notice that the end, or where it becomes kind of a new segment, kind of falls just below where that mouth is. So I'm going to draw that shape. down there where I believe it ends, I'm just going to kind of round it off there. I want to pay attention to those little uh, kind of sticking out, I don't know what you'd call those, but I'm going to create them on my drawing so they're kind of little, it's sometimes the things that make these guys look a little bit scarier than they sometimes actually are. I'm going to continue this line and noticing that it comes below kind of this point. so. Uh, I'm going to create that bumpy shape. Notice that it flares out at the end. So I'm going to kind of create that flare out. 
and then it's it almost looks like instead of like a very sharp point it looks to me like the quill uh, of a pen I'm just gonna kind of create that shape and I feel okay about that I'm looking at the where these two guys end this guy might maybe could come down just a little bit further um, in fact, I think I want it to come down just a tiny bit further. So I'm just going to adjust that. This is why drawing lightly has been so important. So I'm creating that bump. I'm going to have it flare out just a little bit here at the end. And then that quill shape. I know that that seems like a tiny change, but for me that feels a little bit better. Now I'm going to notice where these legs are in relationship. So I'm kind of, in my mind, I'm imagining a kind of a curve here, which I think feels good. I'm also noticing how far does this back leg extend uh, beyond kind of that rear. And what's interesting is it looks to me, if I was to draw a line here and measure this, it feels like it's about the same distance as kind of this space here. So again, that's just kind of a helpful tool I'm going to start, uh, I'm just going to start by creating this part of the leg. Noticing where it ends, that it really kind of touches that backside. Curves up into the body. Alright, now I'm going to create this next little segment. And it's, uh, it's kind of a rectangular shape, but it's also... Um, flares out just a little bit, so I'm going to create that. I didn't mention earlier, but if you would like this specific image that I'm studying uh, so that you can study it closely too, uh, just shoot me a message and I'll email it to you. It's no trouble at all. So, kind of happy with that. I feel like the angle is pretty good. And I'm going to create those little kind of jagged edges that stick off of it. That I think also is pretty good. And now I'm just noticing this curve. And the other thing I'm noticing is if this curve was to extend all the way down, I feel like it would kind of, with the backside curve that we started with, if that extended, I feel like it would, you know, pretty much come into contact with that that curved part of the leg. So I'm just going to use that to help me. And I'm just going to kind of create that. It flares out just like all the other parts there at the end. It should be a rough edge. But I believe this whole thing is segmented. And then there's a little, looks like a little bit of a hook there at the end. All right. All right, so I'm just kind of looking, I'm noticing like some of this mouth, this mouth seems to extend a little bit further down. So I'm just gonna get rid of this a little bit. And I wanna extend this part of the head down just a little bit. Create that rough mouth shape still. I don't know what the details are there. I'm gonna make that hook again. It comes just below the eye. It's that kind of inverted V. And then the last thing I'm going to do, and you'll see more of this in the next video, is I'm just going to kind of define some of these highlights. So I'm looking at like where it's really light here, and I'm just going to kind of create this shape. It goes all the way up to the top of the hook. So I'm just defining that highlight, just like I did on the eye. I'm going to define just two more spaces. So there's uh, it's kind of a rough edge here. comes all the way over. And then there's that uh, that space of separation there. So I can see that dark highlight there. Just want to make sure I make a note of that. I'm going to create that little space. And other than that, I think I'm... Oh, one last thing. I'm going to draw these legs. So there are legs back there on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and create those. Um, just kind of noticing where they fall. So this guy's almost uh, very close to this this front leg. Um, and this will just help to give your piece a little bit more dimension. So I'm just kind of drawing that. And then there's that 
piece of the leg that kind of extends back like that. And then this little guy over here, I'm noticing that it comes down kind of at this part of the curve and it seems to kind of hook back that way. And then I'm just going to create that little curve there. All right. All right. I think that's where we're going to stop. Look for part two so you can see how I use pen and ink to kind of finish this guy off to a certain extent. And thanks for watching.